I'm sweating. The song got me going. Amen. <laughs> Today we're going to continue our series with great power comes great responsibility. I think that it's each and every one of our responsibility as Christians, as, as those of faith, as those who follow Christ, as disciples, to know God's plan of salvation. And I think it's very, very important that we know that this plan starts, ends, and is filled throughout with Jesus. There is no other way, like we looked at the last couple weeks. There is no other way into, into heaven and salvation other than through Christ. There's no advocate to God. There's no secret back door. Only except through the blood of the Lamb, which, of course, the plan of salvation. I, I've got it in your bulletin today. You can kind of look uh, along. I want you to write some verses in uh, if you can. But why is this our responsibility? It's our responsibility to understand it. And briefly today, we're going to talk about it. I, if there's any more questions after that, don't, don't hesitate to ask me, elders, a uh, fellow Christian. It's our responsibility, where we can understand it, to share it. We should be able to share God's plan of salvation about our lives through Christ. And it's also our responsibility to obey. Which is why I always ask, what step are you on? Where are you at in your faith, in your Christian walk, in this plan? Let's just start right in with number one. The first step in the plan of salvation, faith. We have Romans 10, 9 as a memory verse a couple weeks ago. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And of course, we know, we know that believing in him means we're going to be obedient to him. That's a big thing about faith. It's more than just saying, I believe. It's more than just confessing that or declaring it. You've also got to be obedient. John 3:16. Could also fit in this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have what? Everlasting, Everlasting life. When we believe in him, we are faithful to him, we are obedient to him. You can go back to Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. Peter's good confession. When he said, Who do you think I am? Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of God. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first step. Do you believe? Are you ready to say, I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and that there's no other way except through him. That no man will go to the Father except through him. That is step number one, faith. But like I said, believing means that we've got some things to do. Like we've looked at lately in 1 John on Sunday nights. But when, when we believe, we must be obedient. Or in the book of John, it says, if you love me, obey my commands. Well, one of the things that Jesus has told us to do is repent. <laughs> Don't ever underestimate the importance of repentance. That is such a huge thing in our, our plan of salvation. We must turn away from sin. Acts 3.19, repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. We must. Change your mind. Turn the other way. There's a lot of different ways you can look at what the word repent means. But what we know is it means stop sinning. Now, are you going to be successful with that? No. There's going to be times when you fall short. There's going to be times where, where, you, where you fail. Or where you do sin. But you've got to get back up and you've got to try again. Repenting is a lifelong commitment. Now look, this is a big step that you've got to start with here. Step number two, you've got to say, I repent, I'm not going to sin anymore, I'm going to do my best to never turn away from God, I'm going to do my best to not separate myself from Him through sinful nature. Even if you fail, you've got to do that for the rest of your life. There will be sins that creep up on you. There will be temptation that arises. And when that happens, guess what you've got to do? Turn away. Change your mind about it. Say, Lord, forgive me yet again for doing wrong. We must repent, and I think the scripture is very, very clear upon that. If we just say we're just going to believe, we know the book of James says that even the demons believe and tremble in terror. We've looked at that one a lot lately. Think about that. You can seriously just say, if a demon believes, 
going to go to heaven? No, absolutely not. You must be obedient and you must repent away from sin, anything that separates us from, from God's love. Now think about this before we go on. See, mankind had separated itself from God. Adam and Eve, the apple, the, the sinful nature of man after Noah and the ark. Mankind could not reconcile with God. Could not. Impossible. And God knew that they are the ones that had to do it. So what did God do for us? He came to earth. He sent his son to earth to live as a man so that he could be reconciled to us. Only through Christ are we reconciled. Which is why we must be obedient again to him. Next step would be baptism. If you believe and you have repented and you are making a commitment to repent of your sins, next step, baptism. Acts 2.38, this is your memory verse of the week. It's one we should all know. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's a, that's a verse that, that we love here. Without a doubt, there it is. I mean, we're talking about, they're at the temple. Jesus had, had literally just ascended into heaven a week, perhaps, before. The Holy Spirit fills these apostles. They go to the temple, second biggest holiday there of the year in Jerusalem. And they preach the word of God. And they preach repentance. And they preach the name of Jesus Christ who they had just crucified literally a month before. And, and the people there say, uh-oh, they're cut to the heart. Peter, what shall we do? What, what do we got to do? Repent and be baptized. Not, not some of you. Every one of you in the name of Christ for forgiveness and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now look. There's a lot of other verses you can look at with that. Romans 6 just gives a really great example, that, that entire chapter, of, of the death, burial, and resurrection that is baptism. Death to your sin, resurrected in unto Him. A new life, sinless. That John chapter 3, verse 5 specifically, talks about, uh, remember Jesus talking to Nicodemus, talking about being reborn of water, be, re, be, being reborn of spirit, and how it must be done. But what about baptism? Well, this is something I want to make sure everybody understands. This is a decision that we must make as individuals. All right? Nothing, nothing that can be forced upon you. If, if you were baptized as an infant, you need to be thinking about being baptized, a believer's baptism. But that doesn't cut it. You, you can't have faith and you can't have repentance as an infant. You can't. And those are the first two steps. It can't be forced upon you. So if you say to me, Mikey, I was baptized, and yes, it was by immersion, like the scriptures say we should be, but I was eight years old and my mom, my mom drug me down the aisle, I'm going to say maybe we need to think about you know, what, what we need to do next. But it must be your decision. Not forced. Not, not say drug down the aisle. And not to say that you have to think or, or, or be coerced. This must be yours. It must be. And you must go through those first two steps before it can be done. You must make that commitment to repent of sin your entire life, even though you're going to fall short, to do your best to not to sin. You must make that commitment, commitment to say, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And when you do that, God knows your heart and nobody else. God knows it. And then, then you should be baptized. Then. Not some time later, not after you've proven yourself, but then, right then. The scripture, I believe, is very clear about this. When you are baptized, you get to step number four, forgiveness. Where our sins are washed away. You are buried with Christ. When you were baptized. And with him you were raised to new life. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all your sins. I didn't put the entire verse up there. Read it for yourselves. And there it is. This is what baptism gives you. Your, your sins are buried with, with Christ's death on the cross. They're gone. They're gone. But now, you're resurrected with him, forgiven. Now look, let's make sure we make this clear. So, so many times... So many times in my ministry and probably in your lives as well, you've seen or have people ask you, 
or say these words. Brother Mikey, I don't want to be baptized yet because I want to make sure I get all my sin in before I do where they can all be forgiven. Uh, there's a couple things wrong with that. Number one, you haven't made a commitment to repent. That's a problem if you're not ready for baptism. And number two, when you have made that commitment, you believe, you've repented, and you're baptized, your forgiveness is once for all. Your sins before your baptism, your sins after your baptism, every sin, whether you've done it yet or not, they're forgiven, and they will be forgiven. Once for all. You're also going to get the gift of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> that strength in faith that we need. I think this verse kind of describes it best. When the Father sends the advocate or the counselor as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. That is what the Holy Spirit does for us. That extra dose of strength and faith. That, that extra dose of confidence and the authority of God's Word. That, that extra little oomph that we need in our Christian walk every single day of our lives. This past week, when people were asked if they were Christians and then shot. And we mentioned, we talked about this in our Sunday school class this morning. I didn't say anything because I wanted to save this moment for now. But we've all probably asked the question, what, what would we do? What, what would we do if we were faced with that? And, and someone else was just shot after they said, yes, I am a Christian. Would we then stand up and state the same thing? That'd be scary. Without a doubt, it would be. But, but let me tell you something. If you have the Holy Spirit in your heart, yes, you would. There is no doubt about it in my mind. That's what the Holy Spirit would do for us. It would help us to stand up and proudly say, yes, I am a Christian. That's that extra dose of strength that we need. Can you imagine being in that position? I don't like to try to think about it too much. But it's scary times. And, and folks, we have to have that Holy Spirit in our hearts if we plan on succeeding. Not only as a Christian, but, but as, a, as a Christian world. As a Christian nation. That Holy Spirit's going to give us that love, that joy, that peace, that patience, that kindness that we should have towards each other. That Holy Spirit's going to help us to love even when we don't feel love. The Holy Spirit's going to give us that peace of mind and heart to be able to say, yes, I am a Christian. And then let's never forget the next step. Maintain. Follow through with your commitment. You, you made a commitment to repent. You've stated your conviction that you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and risen Savior. You've been baptized. You've received your forgiveness. You've received the Holy Spirit. Now you must, must, must maintain. If you walk away at that point, you're missing the whole picture. If you walk away at that point, I have really doubts about step number one. You must have that faith, that conviction that Jesus is Lord. And that can happen, though. Sometimes people come in. We, we remember the, the, the parable of, of, of the sower. Sometimes those seeds, they, they spring up and they wither away. We've got to make sure, church, that we are helping each other as a church family, as a Christian community, to make sure that soil is ready for us to grow deep roots so we can grow strong. We also must be aware. 1 Peter 5, 8, 9 says, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Amen. Can I get an amen for that? Amen. amen. Guys, we've got to stand firm. No, no matter what happens, no, no matter what kind of discouragement you, you may have in your life, no matter what the world does, we as Christians must stand firm. We've got to watch out. We've got to be alert because there is sin and temptation around every corner. There, there are powers in this world right now that, that tell us that sin is okay. There, there are, are other Christians out there, other bodies of Christians that, that make us look bad. At it, and then we want to show the world, no, wait, we are loving, but we must stay on that path of righteousness no matter what. That's what maintaining is all about. We're going to maintain by reading our scripture, by knowing the word of God, by saying our prayers, by being involved in a church family, by worshiping him, and by most importantly, being obedient every single day. Day. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. My dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, 
For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. I love this verse. Be strong. Be immovable in your faith. Work enthusiastically for the Lord. So, number seven. We do these things, and we're going to get eternal life in heaven. Revelation 21, 3. Look, God. Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or sorrow, or crying, or pain. For all these things are gone forever. Amen. Amen is right. That is awesome. That day is coming, folks, where we're going to be able to say, what a day, what a glorious day that will be when we all see Jesus. Amen. John 14, 2 again tells us, Jesus said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'd go and prepare a place for you. That's right. Jesus is going to prepare a place for you, for Christians, for those who have been obedient, for those that follow him, for those that have followed his plan, for those that truly believe in their hearts that he is Lord. And to that, again, I think we must say amen, because that is truly awesome. Amen. Amen. I say thank you, Lord, for giving us that opportunity, <coughs> that, that chance to be able to live with you one day, for, for giving us your word and your scripture. And you know what? I know that there's a lot of you that know this plan already, but there's some that don't. I know there's a lot of you that, that are on that path. You're maintaining your faith. But this is good review. Things that we need to know, things that we need to be able to share. Maybe today is your day where you're going to walk down the aisle and you're going to give your life to Christ. I say praise God for that. Or maybe you've already done that. In which case I'm challenging you right now to renew your, renew your Christian faith. Renew your spirit. Think about what's important. Think about what our priorities are. Think about what our purpose is as Christians. <clears throat> to live that life full of joy. To be able to say, I rejoice that I'm a Christian. And to be able to share that faith daily with every aspect of your life. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus, who gives us this salvation. This plan that revolves entirely around our faith in him and our obedience to him. Lord, we thank you so very much for the sacrifice that he gave so that we can be reconciled with you. Help us to take advantage of that, Lord. Help us to be prepared to face the, the evils of today's world, to be able to, to stand firm, to stand strong, and to enthusiastically say, I am a Christian. Lord, we thank you so very much. In Christ Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Would you all please?